Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Wolf's Bane English Bitter. Today we are going to be featuring 1978 or 1979s. It's kind of conflicting <laughs> as to when this movie actually came out. Dominique. This movie was directed by Michael Anderson and he did Orca the Killer Whale. Which we just covered. Yeah, exactly. Logan's Run, too, he did. No! <laughs> Cliff Robertson stars in this, and he was in Star 80. I'm gonna get a license plate that says Star 80. Fuck you. <laughs> and he's in Escape from L.A. Gene Simmons is in this, not from Kiss. <laughs> That'd be funny if he was. He's in this. <laughs> he's dumb and he... Well, she's one of those old school actresses that goes way back. She was in Spartacus. She was Admiral Nora Setti in The Next Generation. If there's a Star Trek reference, we're going to mention it. <laughs> That's right. Dominique starts off with Dominique and her husband, David Ballard, having dinner together. And she's talking about the chauffeur. And he's like, well, don't you remember? You fired the chauffeur last night. You got mad at him. No, I don't remember that. They're at this big dinner. David's talking about, oh, there's some troubles with the business. Dominique and her sister start talking about this brooch. Oh, where's that brooch? There's a nice brooch. I can't yeah. find it. They stop the whole damn dinner <laughs> to go look for this stupid brooch. And they find out that Dominique actually kind of stole it, but didn't remember taking it. She's sleeping one night and she hears a noise and gets up and it's all dark and mysterious she goes into the conservatory <laughs> like clue <laughs> yeah. she sees this skeleton thing hanging she goes against her husband and they go look and well there's nothing there it's, yeah. it's gone so she feels like she's losing her mind one night david is sleeping and he hears this crash glass breaking he gets up and eerie and slow he goes down the stairs it's a big house it takes yeah. a long time to get there <laughs> he goes to the conservatory dominique is hanging there she had committed suicide gets the coroner over and the chauffeur the chauffeur yeah, actually has chauffeur. to cut her down and the coroner tells her yeah sorry you know she's dead they're at the funeral they see the casket go down in the ground everyone's there in black david's back at his study he's all smoking that cigar yeah, he seems <laughs> a little kind of too happy with himself over just what happened and he gets disturbed again at night by this kind of somber piano playing he gets up and goes down and the piano is playing and yeah. no one's sitting there he goes and looks at the keys and the keys are being depressed the lid comes down on the keys he's like oh my god then he sees Dominique coming towards him. Then he goes and kind of hides in his study. <laughs> yeah. So David ends up getting a phone call. Something very weird has happened. Something odd. You're going to have to come down and take a look. Goes all the way down to the cemetery. And he sees that somebody has delivered a tombstone with his name on it. The date of death says soon. David ends up actually paying off the chauffeur again the chauffeur this poor bastard they're dragged <laughs> in all this shit yeah pays him quite a lot of money to actually dig up the grave because he keeps seeing visions of her walking down that corridor by the conservatory they end up digging the, the coffin up and it's just rocks inside and he starts seeing her standing outside of his work and phoning him. He's getting letters delivered to his work that are... Signed her. Yeah, it's like, what the hell? He actually has her legally this time exhumed. And when they open the casket up, she's in there. So, like, what the hell's going on, right? He kind of doesn't believe this, right? And so he confronts the coroner, and he's like, well, when we put her in the casket, are you sure she was dead? He's like, well, yeah, of course. Like, of course. <laughs> it turns out that somebody's in the coroner's house, though, and ends up killing the coroner. The point-of-view yeah. kill, where yeah. he's all... It's very yeah. Avengers-like. Yeah, yeah. He's got that poker. He's got that cane or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You see them grab that weird scalpel type yeah. thing and so david goes back to the tombstone to look at what the date might be right and it turns out that it says october 25th on it, it just happens to be the 24th he tries to go to sleep but he hears footsteps again downstairs he goes down that long winding staircase yeah. and he sees dominique coming at him again and so he shoots at her 
and of course nothing happens. Goes into that study again. <laughs> again? <laughs> always into the study? Like... <laughs> and he has this calendar. He flips it over to the 25th. And that's where we're going to end the story. So if you want to see what happens to David and with Dominique, yeah. finish watching Dominique. <laughs> Is it really a ghost? Is it foul play? Oh. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> and that's one of the best things about this movie. The whole story and the plot of the movie, right? And the mystery. <laughs> yeah. And all the twists, because there's a lot of tons of twists in this movie, and they happen early on. Like, Dominique, like, the main character dies, like, not even a quarter into the movie. Like, oh, shit, she's dead. Or, like, yeah, what's going to happen now? And then they dig her up, and she's not in there. Early in the movie, too, and you're like, Oh, well, I guess she's not really in there. Yeah. It's foul play. That twist is behind us. And then they dig her up again. She's in there. It's like, so <laughs> yeah. they, there's these twists, but the twists end up not being twists because they come back on itself. And you're always wondering. It's like, okay, well, with all these new clues, something's got to come of it. And then it turns out to be just yeah. all smoke and mirrors. Yeah. And the twists keep coming all the way to the end. This movie is a great twist ending, which you, you never see coming. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh man, like, oh, they got me. Yeah. They got me. The characters in this are great. And there, of course, there's not many, which is what helps it. Doesn't get too bogged down with too many characters to keep track of. It's very simple. It's Dominique, and then she dies, and mm -hmm. then her husband, David, who is basically has to carry this movie by himself after that because it's just him alone in the house. And the damn chauffeur. And the, and the <laughs> chauffeur. And those are kind of the main characters. You don't need much more than that. Cliff Robertson does a great job of just carrying, carrying this movie, you know, with not much dialogue. No, that's the interesting thing about this yeah. movie. There's almost nothing being said in yeah. the whole movie. It's just all reaction. Yeah. You, know, you see something and he reacts to it and that's it it's brilliant how they pull it off there's no dialogue moving the story forward it's almost just all visuals and reactions it is kind of realistic in terms of if you see a ghost what would you say yeah you wouldn't say anything maybe you wouldn't say anything right yeah. and it kind of it's portrayed that way in this yeah. movie right he's he just freezes yeah and then goes to his study. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> You're not going to have some big speech and all this fucking dialogue yeah. after you see a ghost. You're going to shit your pants. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Fuck, like, how can I relate to these rich, mm -hmm. upper crust people that I already kind of don't like them because they're, they're all rich and hoity toity. But then right away, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm not supposed to like them. As soon as Dominique dies, yep. like, oh, I'm not supposed to like David the big rich house starts to make sense because you don't like him because he's this big rich guy who may be a little corrupt and crooked. Exactly. And the fact the house is so big helps build the tension because when he hears the sounds, it takes him a long time to get there. And you, you see him go there, it builds the yeah. tension of him walking down those stairs, the long corridor. So the big house really helps the atmosphere of it all. Camera work in this movie is fantastic. The way they frame the shots. A lot of the lighting for this movie is basically a hallmark of the movie, yeah. right? Giallo, Italian, yeah. Argento type vibe. Crazy lighting is always at nighttime. Mm -hmm. And then during the daytime shots in the house, it looks all drab and boring, like real life. Exactly. It's yeah. drab and kind of boring. But at night, when the hauntings happen, is when the lighting gets all unreal. You yeah. know, the, the lighting is kind of saying things are starting to get unreal here. And they are. It's like, ah, fuck, what's going on? Yeah. This crazy lighting in this house. Why is it all red over there? I don't know. But... <laughs> yeah, but who cares? Yeah. Right? It kind of has its own piano theme, which happens to just play throughout the movie, right? Where you think it's the ghost doing yeah. it, maybe, playing the piano. But it also helps to bring that somber feel yeah. to the movie as well, right? You really kind of feel this... A weight on your chest from yeah. everything that's going on. This movie is a perfect example of less is more. The plot is so simple. There's no dialogue. There's very few characters. It keeps your attention. It keeps you intrigued right till the end. And at the end, it's like, oh fuck, they they <laughs> fooled me. When 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 it gets to the actual ending and the resolve and what actually is going on, it's like, oh man. There's twists within twists. It's a brilliant movie. Yeah. It actually, it's, it's brilliant yeah. in, in its simplicity. 
So for fans of like Twilight Zone, it's, it's like a long Twilight Zone episode. Kind of, yeah. And Night Gallery, it reminds me a lot of that pilot episode, Night Gallery, The Cemetery. Yeah. It's a lot like that. It is really a perfect example of telling a story visually, mm -hmm. letting the visuals do all the work and dial back the dialogue. No bullshit. Check out Dominique. And until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>